Next speaker is Professor Dervla Morris, if Dervla's there. And Dervla is going to speak to us about um, a One Health Challenge antimicrobial resistance. So you're very welcome, Dervla. Good afternoon, and thanks to the organisers for giving me the opportunity to speak to you today about uh, what Ireland is doing to address the global challenge of antimicrobial resistance. So antimicrobial resistance is recognised globally as one of the greatest threats to uh, public health and to modern healthcare, and also is uh, recognised as one of the greatest threats to achievement of the sustainable development uh, goals. As Alistair alluded to in his talk, a recent report estimated that 4.95 million deaths were associated with bacterial antimicrobial resistance in the year 2019 alone, and 1.27 million deaths were attributable to bacterial antimicrobial resistance. A review commissioned by the UK government estimated that 10 million deaths per year will be due to antimicrobial resistance unless by the year 2050, unless we take action now. So antimicrobial resistance or antibiotic resistance arises because we use an awful lot of antibiotics both in human and animal healthcare. And as Alistair mentioned, when we uh, give an antibiotic to a human or an animal, it will impact other normal bacterial flora, which then again leads to antimicrobial resistant bacteria being emitted into our environment through the waste of that human or animal. Also antimicrobial resistance genes. And as Alistair mentioned, a lot of the antimicrobials we use are not metabolized fully in the body. So those antimicrobials can then also be emitted into the environment and the waste of that human or animal. As Alistair also mentioned, very often people don't dispose of their antimicrobials correctly. They may flush any waste antimicrobials they have down the toilet or into the bin, again, uh, running the risk of it entering the environment. So in order to address the challenge of antimicrobial resistance, we need to take a One Health approach. The One Health approach recognizes that the health of humans and the health of animals are linked with the health of the environment that we share. And the need to take a One Health approach to address the problem of antimicrobial resistance is recognized by governments throughout the world. The World Health Organization developed the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance in 2015, and this has been adopted by countries around the world, including Ireland. We published our first National Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance in October 2017, and our second revision of our National Action Plan, INOP2, was published in November uh, 2021. So the uh, objectives of INOC 1, or the timeline for it, was 2017 to 2020, and it aims to achieve five key strategic objectives, aligning very much with the key strategic objectives of the Global Action Plan on Antimicrobial Resistance. So today I'm going to give you a very brief snapshot of some of the actions that were achieved through the lifetime of INOC 1. Very brief. Now, there's a whole load of actions that have been achieved, and they're all listed in detail in the INOC 2 document. So I'm going to take you through each of the strategic objectives and give you a couple of examples of some of the actions that have been achieved or some of the initiatives that have been started. So the first uh, strategic objective is to improve awareness and knowledge of antimicrobial resistance. The HSC, to, to address the strategic objective, developed the RESIST campaign through their AMREC team, the Antimicrobial Resistance and Infection Control Team. So they developed a range of educational materials aimed at healthcare and social care workers about the importance of hand hygiene, about how we use antibiotics, and about the importance of keeping the environment in which our patients are housed clean for the benefit of patients themselves. The Department of Agriculture also and the environmental sectors also developed a number of uh, communication activities. As an example, the Department of Agriculture collaborated with the Irish Farmers Journal and published a number of articles every two weeks in the Irish Farmers Journal through 2019, and developed a range of short informational uh, videos. These were aimed at farmers and farm workers, but actually because they're available on YouTube, and I invite you to look at this, because they feature uh, Dr. Garvin, who's in the audience today. They're very accessible for the public if they want to know more about the problem of antimicrobial resistance and how we can work together to, to tackle it. The second strategic objective is to enhance awareness of antibiotic resistance and antibiotic use. So through the lifetime of INAP1, uh, the first One Health report, which brought together antimicrobial use and antimicrobial resistance data in the human and animal sectors, was brought together into one document for the first time. So bringing this data together is essential so that we can understand how we can tackle the problem of antimicrobial resistance together. The second revision of this One Health document on antimicrobial use and antimicrobial resistance is currently under development and will include data from the environmental sector uh, also, which is very welcome. 
The third strategic objective is to reduce the spread of infection and disease. So again, the HSE's AMRIC team have developed an action plan within which they have published several national guidance documents aimed at the healthcare sector uh, around infection prevention and control and how we are using antimicrobials and how to better use antimicrobials. As an example of the benefit of preventing disease in the first place, the case of bovine viral diarrheal disease in cattle is, a, is an interesting example. So this is a particular viral disease that occurs in cattle and that can cause persistent infections in calves. And that can result in a series of the impacts on the health of those animals throughout their life course. They experience several infections and which have to be treated ultimately with antimicrobials. So in 2011, the industry came together and agreed to implement an eradication program, which started in 2013. And I'm happy to report, and this data again is available in the INOP2 document, that in 2020, there has been a 20-fold decrease in the persistent infection with this uh, organism in, in calves. And that has benefited, it's estimated in 2020 alone, the farming sector by 85 million. So not only does it have an impact on the animals' welfare themselves, it also impacts on antimicrobial use and has an economic uh, benefit. The fourth strategic objective is to optimize the use of antibiotics in human and animal healthcare. And again, the different sectors have taken a number of actions in this area. Um, as mentioned earlier on uh, in the discussion, uh, the better use of different antimicrobials. So what the HSE did was develop a list of green antimicrobials and a list of red antimicrobials. And they encouraged community prescribers, so general practitioners, to choose antibiotics when, when treating patients from the green list and to limit their use of antibiotics on the red list. And as we see just in the graph down the bottom here, since this started in 2019, we've seen an increase in the use of green antibiotics in the community sector and a decrease in the use of red antibiotics, thereby reserving those antibiotics when they're absolutely needed and minimizing the use of antibiotics that may have a greater effect on the environment and may be more persistent. In the agricultural sector, we see impacts of antimicrobial use. There's a nice case study outlined in INAF2, which describes the farmer John Hanrahan, a Limerick uh, pig farmer, who decided he would improve his uh, biosecurity processes, he would in in improve his farming practices, and reduced down his use of antibiotics. Because he improved his farming practices, it reduced the disease load in his animals, and he has managed to reduce his antibiotic use by 98%. Uh, he also participated in a number of DAFM funded uh, research projects like AMURAP and uh, PathServe. Um, and, and that nicely leads us on to uh, strategic objective five, which is to promote research and sustainable investment in new medicines, diagnostic uh, tools, vaccines and other interventions. So there's a lot of research funding across the different agencies aimed towards antimicrobial resistance, but it's somewhat limited in terms of uh, funding across the different uh, sectors. So I'm just going to mention very briefly, again, given the time we have today, a couple of uh, research projects. In July 2021, uh, HICWA, together with the RCSI, published uh, an economic burden uh, analysis of antimicrobial resistance in Ireland. So this was, they looked at the number of infections associated with antibiotic resistance in 2019 and they found that there were 7,400 infections associated with antibiotic resistance across the 50 acute care hospitals in Ireland in, in 2019, um, and also 215 deaths, which they estimated uh, cost an additional cost to the HSE of 12 million. But the authors do acknowledge that that estimate is problematic, and the range of costs ranged from 4.9 million to 23.3 million. Um, there's a number of ongoing research projects, as I said, just going to mention two today. The PEER project is an ongoing research project funded by the EPA, which is looking at the public health impact of interacting with recreational waters and whether or not you're more likely to be colonized with antimicrobial resistant bacteria or not. And we have some interesting findings, and if anybody is interested, there's a poster just outside the door on that um, project. But what we found very briefly is that it appears that if you're participating in recreational water activities that may have a protective effect on your gut in terms of colonization with antimicrobial resistance, which is a nice finding. The ARREST project was jointly funded by the HSC and the EPA and actually has just recently finished. So this was a large national project where we examined the, uh, the role of the environment in the persistence and transmission of antimicrobial resistance. The final report is uh, 
about to be published and we are going to launch the report at an in-person event at the Gallant Hotel in Galway on June 15th and you're all welcome to come along if you're available where you get to meet the project team and hear about our findings and the key recommendations arising out of that work. So we've achieved a lot under INOP1, a lot of actions have been taken and actually Ireland was complimented by the European Commission and the ECDC uh, following their One Health Country visit in October 2019, um, heralding Ireland as a positive example for other countries. So now we need to move on and continue with that good work in INAF2. So the lifetime of INAF2 is 2021 to 2025, again addressing the same key strategic objectives aligning with the Global Action Plan. So in uh, INAF2, we have 15 One Health actions listed and again, 153 actions and interventions listed under each of those five key strategic um, objectives. I'm happy to say some of the actions have already been achieved, such as the publication of a research gap analysis on the environmental dimension of antimicrobial resistance, which was commissioned by the EPA and published in 2021. Uh, the development of an AMR thematic network, which is bringing together key stakeholders across each of the three sectors, together with the funders, together with the researchers. And under that uh, remit, we're currently developing a cross-sectoral research gap analysis. So we've done a lot, um, but we need to keep going. Uh, we need to build on the achievements uh, that have been made through INAP1. We need to develop better mechanisms for sharing data across the sectors for the benefit of the policymakers and also to inform the research going forward. As a researcher, we need to develop better mechanisms for cross-sectoral funding. So as I said, the ARREST project is a nice example of where the HSE and the EPA came together to jointly fund uh, research. We need to see more examples of that. We need to develop better mechanisms of translating those research findings or getting those research findings to the key policymakers to actually affect a change. And we need to enhance our communication with the general public. So there's lots of good things that have happened already in terms of communicating to healthcare staff communicating to farmers, but we need to engage better with the general public about the problem of antimicrobial resistance. Because it's not just the scientists and the doctors and the vets that can actually deal and, and sort out the problem of antimicrobial resistance. We need the public on board too, so that we can protect antibiotics for our children and for our children's children. So thank you. Thank you, Dervla.